ओम सहना सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर कर्वा वह तेजस्वीनावदितमस्तु मिद्विषावि ओ शांति 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 ओ मे ही प्रोटेक्ट अस बोथ स्टूडेंट एंड टीचर मे ही नरिश अस बोथ टुगेदर मे वी वर्क कंजॉइंटली विद ग्रेट एनर्जी मे अवर स्टडीज बी विग्रस एंड इफेक्टिव मे वी नॉट म्यूचुअली डिस्प्यूट ओम लेट देर बी पीस इन मी लेट देर बी पीस इन माई एनविरामेंट एंड लेट देर बी पीस इन द फोर्सेस दैट एक्ट ऑन मी डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेनली द ट्यूबोक्लोसिस ऑफ शोल्डर ज्वाइंट and along with that we will be also discussing the tuberculosis of the ankle joint tuberculosis osteomyelitis and the tuberculosis of the sh- short tibular bones so the points to be discussed in tb shoulder includes the incidence and etiopathology clinical features and radiography and treatment four points tb ankle again four points incidence etiopathology clinical features radiography and the treatment for tuberculosis osteomyelitis six points we will be discussing incidence and etiopathology clinical features radiography spina ventosa type osteomyelitis then tb of the tubular bones and tb of the short tubular bones let us start with the first topic today the tb of the shoulder joint now this is quite uncommon and accounts for only the 2% of the cases it is more common in adults incidence of concomitant pulmonary tuberculosis is high now the tuberculosis of the shoulder joint could start in any one of the following sites it may start at synovium it may start at glenoid it may start at head of the humerus now the pathology is the same in other, as in other forms of the skeletal tuberculosis we have been discussing since our last few videos now as far as the clinical features are concerned tuberculosis of the shoulder joint rarely ever presents at the stage of synovitis only when the abduction and external rotation movements of the shoulder are grossly decreased then only patient will come to you there is wasting of the deltoid and the supraspinatus muscles mainly now the common variety is the dry type and it is called as caries sicca why caries sicca because there is no effusion into the joint now the cold abscess formed could present at either the supraspinatus fossa or at the deltoid or at the bicep now in the late stage the destruction of upper end of the humerus and the glenoid cavity are seen you can see the first x ray here the upper end of the humerus and glenoid cavity are destroyed and then the fibrous ankylosis is the result the radiographs generally show the ray refraction the articular cartilage erosion cavities in the head of the humerus and lethal periosteal reaction you can see in this particular x ray now in the advanced cases there is a inferior subluxation of the humeral head if you look carefully in this particular x ray what is shown in the your slide there is a associated pulmonary tuberculosis as well now this is a very common picture in case of the shoulder uh, tuberculosis coming to the treatment treatment is essentially as in other forms of tuberculosis here chemotherapy is the mainstay of the treatment now the shoulder is immobilized in a saluting position this is what is called as saluting position that is 70 degrees or 90 degrees of abduction 30 degrees of forward flexion now this encourages ankylosis in a functional position now the shoulder is put into the abduction frame for after 3 months and as a rule 
सफिशियंट कंपेंसेटरी मूवमेंट डेवलप्स एट द स्कैपिलोथोरेसिस जॉइंट जनरली अ साउंड फाइब्रस एंकिलोसिस डेवलप्स एंड सेस दिस इज अ नॉन वेट बेरिंग जॉइंट ए साउंड फाइब्रस जॉइंट इज एक्सेप्टेबल but sometimes we need to go for uh, the shoulder arthrodosis now the indication for arthrodosis are painful ankylosis uncontrolled disease and recurrence these are the three main important indications now the ankylosis can be done as what is shown in the first x ray now let us see the tuberculosis of the ankle joint now this is very uncommon and the incidence is only 5% the site of involvement could be synovium distal end of the tibia malleoli talus and rarely calcaneum now the patient may complain of pain in the region of ankle he may complain of limp or a swelling over and in front of the joint malleoli and endoachillis now the ankle joint is usually held in plantar flexion as what is visible or shown in the first clinical photograph in the late, late cases there is a pathological anterior dislocation of the ankle joint the ankle movements are decreased there is a gross wasting of the calf muscles and evidence of the sinus formation radiographs radiographs in the early stages show marked osteoporosis of the ankle bones and in the late stages as what is shown in the present x ray there is a destruction of the ankle joint you can see how the ankle joint is completely destroyed here now the treatment part the aim is to achieve a painless ankylosis in a neutral position of the ankle that is plantar grade position and this is achieved by observing the principles following principles chemotherapy is started first as we have already discussed then immobilization in a below knee plaster cast as shown in the third uh, picture so the immobilization in below knee plaster cast in a neutral position is done crutch walking for first 8 to 12 weeks with the plaster on and after 6 months below knee caliper is worn for 2 years now with this treatment also sometime it fails and hence we need to go for surgery now the indications for surgery in ankle tuberculosis are when one conservative treatment fails two when the diagnosis is in doubt now what are the surgical methods we use the surgical methods are two mainly first synovectomy and joint debridement during the stage of synovitis and early arthritis and two arthrodesis for the advanced and persistent disease now let us discuss the last topic the tubercular osteomyelitis now here the onset of tubercular tuberculosis foci is within the bone because of the deficient anastomosis of the osseous arteries in childhood thrombosis caused by the tubercular pathology may lead to sequestration of a major part of the diaphysis now you can see the involvement of the complete ulna here in the in this particular picture now this can occur in any of the long tubular bone and incidence is 2 to 3% and 7% occurring at multiple sites now as far as the clinical features of long tubular bone tuberculous osteomyelitis are the patient complains of pain in the affected bone swelling there may be a swelling as you can see in this particular picture that person is having a swelling in the middle third of the leg on the tibial shin now the swelling is warm and tender there may be cold abscess or sinus formation or ulcer may be present now there may be regional lymphadenopathy as well radiographs of the anterior posterior and lateral view of the affected part will show the irregular cavities 
with the sclerosis, honeycomb appearance particularly and soft tissue swelling. Now there is something known as spina ventosa type. Now particularly when the, it affects the long tubular bones of the forearm. So at times there may be a fusiform swelling of the bone. That is what we call it as spina ventosa type. In these cavities contain the soft feathery sequestra, subperiosteal new bone formation is present and if it is complicated by sinus or secondary infection, intense reactive sclerosis, sequestra and pathological fracture are also seen. Now the incidence is 3% and occurs at the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction usually as what we had seen in the first uh, picture, ulna. Now it may start as a diaphyseal region also as what is shown in this particular x-ray. It is in the middle third. It is indicated by the red arrow. Now this, there is another something called as disseminated skeletal tuberculosis. Now this is a very rare with 7% incidence only. And it may be due to hematogenous spread or may be due to repeated impregnation at different sites. Rarely, it may be present as multiple cystic lesions and it is called as osteitis tuberculosa multiplex cystoides. And as far as the treatment is concerned, chemotherapy is the mainstay of the treatment and then you have to repeat the radiographs every six months to find out what is the progress. Coming to the last topic today, the short tubular bone tuberculosis infection. The tuberculosis of the short tubular bone involves metacarpals and metatarsals and in phalanges it is uncommon after the age of 5 years. This is called tuberculous ductilitis. Now you can see the first diagram, the swollen middle finger and the little finger. Hand is more frequently involved than foot and due to the lavish blood flow through the large nutrient artery entering almost in the middle of the bone. The first inoculum of the infection is lost in the center of the marrow cavity, which leads to a spindle shaped expansion of the bone and we call it as a spina ventosa. Now there is a subperiosteal new bone formation in the x-rays. You can see the last x-ray here and there can be abscesses and the sinus formation can be seen clinically. Secondary infection causes further thickening of the bones. Patient may complain of pain, swelling, skin discoloration, discharge in sinuses and scars over the affected parts. The features are, if you take the radiographs, then features are lytic lesions. Now you can see in the index finger proximal phalanx in this first fracture, uh, first x-ray. So features are lytic lesion in the middle of the bone, then there are subperiosteal new bone formation may present and a soft cork like sequestra and a spina ventosa honeycomb type. Now here the chemotherapy is the mainstay of the treatment and has been already discussed so many times in my previous uh, lectures. You may refer to those previous lectures on bone and joint skeletal tuberculosis. Surgical curators or bone excision may be required in intractable cases. Now, before we end here, I want to talk to you about one more important topic. The happy key to lose weight. Dear students, one of the commonest problem we are facing in our routine orthopedic clinical practice is obesity. Eat less and exercise more formula has proved to be the failed formula for controlling the obesity. Of late, I have been working on this latest most scientific evidence based concept of weight loss happy key. You may find few videos on this topic as well on my YouTube channel. The obesity among the medical student is at its peak nowadays. 
I see so many obese girls and boys in my medical college. And due to obesity, not only they are bullied, but most of them also lose their self-confidence, resulting in deteriorating performance in the academics. For all of them, this online video course will be most valuable. If interested, you may visit my Facebook page https semicolon slash slash www.facebook.com slash the happy key. My website address is www.drsudhir.com. I host regular webinar for the same twice a week on Wednesday and Friday at 8 p.m. And those who cannot attend at evening 8 p.m. For them on Sundays afternoon 12 noon. You may join using these webinars using this particular link https semicolon slash slash zoom dot us slash j slash eight two seven nine four zero four three zero eight. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing my channel.